we're getting closer and closer to the finish line. Now it is time to assemble all our different elements and prepare everything for rendering. What you see right now on my screen is my lock net. If I zoom out, we are on the very right side where you have a green node that says final renders. And in this merge, we are seeing just our buildings, the lighting that we set up earlier and the camera. You already recognize those nodes. I just copied them from uh, where we had them earlier in our setup here and pasted them here. After that, let us, let's assemble all the elements from our shot together. First, let's check our heli RBD. And it's working, it's coming through, perfect, our destruction looks great. Remember how we were setting things up before? Deformation motion blur is going to be active only on the helicopter. That's why I'm adding the cache node only after the helicopter. And here you see if you view the cache node, some things have changed on the screen. We can see now we have proper motion blur on the pieces of the helicopter. After that, let's import the rest. We have our heli explosion. Obviously right now what we're seeing is just the density because we have not set up our shaders yet, but at least it is coming through. This is the most important part at this stage. Let's load our um, smoke and fire after the helicopter debris. Already hit here can see it uh, behind the front part of the helicopter. So, so this is working. I can see this smoke here and here in the sky. Perfect. After that, we have our heli dust. Let's check our ground pieces dust. Uh, hard to judge on this frame because not many pieces have fallen on the ground. We are only nine frames, frames in the, the simulation. Uh, but believe me, I checked other frames. It is there and it will be the same with the building dust. We can see some of it here on the right side behind the front piece. So all the elements, they are there. After that, let's just make sure that uh, later when we decide to render, uh, Karma is aware that we want to uh, use velocity blur on everything but the heli RBD. So this is the same thing we did before, render geometry settings. After that, we have our material library and these are the same materials as you had before as we looked through before, and later we are assigning all of them. So let's see what is the final result with all the materials assigned. Looks epic if you ask me. Okay, at least we know that all the elements are working, they're all coming through, we can view all of them with proper shaders through Karma XPU. Let's see how we will be rendering everything. Let me zoom out and go here on the left side. First you here see the area called Heli RBD. And on that, we are isolating just the RBD of the helicopter. But as I told you, when we are rendering the helicopter, the scene needs to be aware of all other elements because we need to have some shading from other elements. And also, uh, for example, the pieces of the heli, they need to be illuminated by the fire that is uh, right near those pieces. That's why the other elements, they need to be phantoms. And we do that through render geometry settings, where we select all the objects, all the elements in the scene, except for heli RBD. We scroll down and we set the holdout mode to background, which means right now, everything else but the heli RBD is set to holdout. You can see uh, little areas here in red where we already have some illumination from the fire. That's why we are adding all those elements as holdouts. You will notice that I have a switch here. Why? Because our explosion happens at frame 1431. And what I noticed is before that frame, if I leave my set phantoms as, this, as it is, Houdini will take some time trying to process all these elements, explosion, debris, smoke, dust, ground dust, heli dust, and so on. When before the beginning of the simulation, they really just don't exist. And what I'm doing is I'm hard coding this logic. I'm adding a switch, which will switch at frame 1431 to the right input. And before the explosion happens, it's gonna take into account the left input. And the left input uses this prune node which, as you can see, removes everything but the helicopter, the buildings, and the ground. 
So no need for Houdin to even try to compute anything. We say before this frame 1431, just isolate this guy, then set the phantoms. The building and the ground are the phantoms. And then uh, we render it out. Let's look at what we have in our Karma render settings. We are viewing right now in our viewport through Karma XPU, and we will also set our Karma node to XPU engine. We're increasing the samples. And then if you go to the image output, we have some custom AOVs set here. If I scroll down, so you can see we are uh, rendering a few diffuse AOVs. Same for reflection and refraction and for lights and emission, because we have indirect emission from the fire and from the explosion on the helicopter. And after that, pretty much, you are ready to render this render heli RBD. In a very similar manner, we are outputting some utilities. For those utilities, I'm isolating just the helicopter. You can see heli RBD is selected, everything else is pruned. And after that, I am setting Cryptomats. And when the cryptomats are on, if I go to my render heli utilities, I can see my cryptomat materials and my cryptomat primitives. Here are all the named primitives. And here are my materials. I have one material on the helicopter and one on the glass. So these cryptomats, you might want to separate your geometry using them later in compositing. That's why we set them up. After that, in a similar manner, we are rendering our explosion. The switch here has exactly the same uh, logic that before frame 1431, it just links to a null, so we don't need to render anything. Just in case you set your render um, frames before, it's not going to try to compute everything up this chain. Okay, and after that, we are setting the phantoms, which are everything but heli explosion is a phantom. And after that, in the render explosion, we do similar things. We are setting our uh, karma to XPU engine, and there are some EOVs that we are setting. In this case, we do not need any reflections or refractions or diffuse EOVs. What we need is direct and indirect emission. You can set up all the other volume passes, all the dusts on the ground, dust on the building, heli dust. Uh, go ahead and do it yourself in exactly the same. Last but not least, another pass that you will need for compositing is shadows. And for that, we remove the buildings because we need the shadows on the ground. After that, we are adding rendered geometry settings. And there, on the ground, we are setting a parameter for render visibility and we are setting, saying that it is visible only to primary rays. So we don't want any secondary rays to be affecting our ground. After that, I am using the background plate node in which I'm adding the ground into the primitives here. It means that my ground will be catching the shadows. Here in the primitive, you put the object that you want to be shadow catcher. Then let's view our karma render settings. To be able to use the uh, background plate node, what you need to do is in image output, you need to turn on input, import render vars from second input. And after you do that, what is going to happen is this combination, this background plate with this ticked on, will be able to create shadow passes for you. So here on the right side, if I click on those three, you know, on the icon of three pictures, and select hold out shadows, what we have is the contribution of the shadows from all the elements of our scene. Later, this is something that we will be using in compositing to add the shadows from our CG elements onto the plate. That's it. You're ready to set up all the renders, kick them off on your system, and then enjoy the results of your hard work. I hope this was useful. I hope you learned a thing or two from that. And as I said, uh, usually that's not where we stop. The work continues. Now you need to uh, take all those elements, assemble them, and composite them over the plate.